Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. I thought I knew it all, so I started reading Past the Wire. You should read it too. Oh, Paulie Tochuk, Brooklyn, New York. I know John, PastorWyatt.com, about 40 years now. And I can tell you something, nobody better than this man. After all, they call him the Pick Six King, PK6. Not because he was Walmart's best shopper of the month. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe. The Breeders' Cup's coming up. PastorWire.com. Don't show up on us. Well, I promised you that I would do it. So here we are. We are going to do the Breeders' Cup Classic by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns. Uh, I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to get into these patterns. Uh, we started doing these Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns shows. I think for the Kentucky Oaks, uh, they've been spot on straight, straight, straight through every race that we've done. Uh, any misreads or, or, or miscalculations really fall back on me uh not the numbers and the patterns and i will say this uh it's early we're, we're, we're what three weeks out from the breeders cup uh, you know there's some you know late defections that we don't know about yet maybe some late additions that we don't know about yet but one thing we do know the numbers don't lie the patterns don't lie they are what they are so these shows are really about the patterns and who who we think is going forward, who we think is is sitting on a, on a, on a regression or a quote bounce. Uh, so we're going to get into all of that stuff uh, in a minute, and uh, I think this is a show that everybody will like and will definitely give you a leg up on the Breeders' Cup Classic. profitable Breeders' Cup ever with Pass the Wire. Sign up now for the annual Breeders' Cup seminar. All the angles, winning insights, betting strategy, and more. The best Breeders' Cup seminar on the planet, only from Pass the Wire. With a proven track record of success, nobody does it better. Reserve your spot today at PassTheWire.com. Before we start the show, let me just uh, let everybody know uh, we do have, we, we, we got a great response for our annual Pass the Wire Breeders' Cup seminar. There are still some spots available. Uh, if, if you plan on attending, I would grab a spot. We'll put a link down in the comments uh, or the write up to this, to this video and it'll be on, it's, it's already on pastorwire.com. So you could find a place there to, you, you know, grab yourself a seat. Uh, we're going to attack it a little bit differently this year than we have in the past, but our seminars are usually um, really, really informative, really good, a lot of fun. Um, definitely uh the seminar to check out unless of course you hate money if you hate money it's not the place for you uh, but if you're looking for the ace you're in the right place because that's the place that you'll find it so uh check out the past the wire annual breeders cup seminar uh you will be glad you did if you attended uh win lose or draw you know you'll get everybody get something out of it so and and like i said we're we're going to try it a little bit differently this year, and I think you're going to like it. So uh, check that out, and uh, we'll be back and dissect these thoroughgraph numbers and patterns for the classic. Uh, so hang tight. Begins in horse racing with exactly the same thing. A dream. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. That dream is what unites us. But what truly sets us apart is choosing to make that dream a thrilling reality. At Dare to Dream Stable, we've been on a relentless mission to breathe life into those dreams for our partners for over 20 years. Here's the wire, Moon Cat! Our track record cat, speaks down, for itself. Legacy. We've excelled at turning Legacy. dreams into reality. And to win. At the most reasonable price points in the industry. And the winner's circle is Dare to Dream Stable, LLC. So the question is, do you dare to dream? 
Join us in racehorse ownership today. Well, you know, interesting. This year, the classic um, stands out for a couple of a couple of reasons. Uh, and remember, although these shows are about the numbers and patterns and not so much handicapping, which we'll get into in the seminar, a lot of other articles, maybe some other shows and stuff uh, before the classic, uh, Pass the Wire will be on scene, um, brought to you by Amwager and Dare to Dream Stable all week long with behind the scenes stuff that you'll be able to see, uh, interviews, insight, checking up on some contenders, checking up on some pretenders, seeing what we can spot out there every morning. Um, but that aside, we're going to touch base on a couple of uh, handicapping uh, tidbits during the show, which we haven't done really in the past on the uh, Thurgraph, uh shows. In addition to our seminar, Thurgraph does their own seminar um, on the Breeders' Cup. And if you know, you're going to uh, consider attending some seminars, that is also an excellent one, especially if you want to delve more into the uh, Thurgraph numbers and patterns and uh, get some of Jerry Brown's insight into, into, into those races as well. Uh, so there's two great options for you. Uh, now, like I said, a couple of, couple of different things about the Classic this year. Uh, first off, three-year-olds appear to be dominant we've got a lot of three-year-old contenders a lot of three-year-olds that can you know conceivably win the race um the favorites probably going to be archangelo he's a three-year-old um had forte not gone south a little bit um he's a three-year-old he'd have been the favorite uh and a lot of horses are coming in fresh um which we'll talk a lot more about on, on the seminar and who that's going to help and who that's going to hurt. And I definitely think there are horses it will help. And I definitely think there are horses that it will hurt. Uh, but a lot of horses are coming in fresh much more than normal. Um, you, you know, recent preps for the Breeders' Cup Classic this year are not um, are not the norm. So that that that's interesting. Um, yeah, three-year-olds, a lot of fresh horses, um, interesting pace dynamics, all of that's going to come into play. Um, the fact that it's run at Santa Anita, all of that, all of, all of that's going to come into play. But without further ado, um, let's get into the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns. Um, we may not hit every horse that's in the classic Um you know, I, 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 I ordered these sheets based on who I thought um, might might be there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, there could be, like I said, a few late uh, defections, a few late additions. We'll see. But we'll start. Um, I guess we're going in an alphabetical order or close close to it. Um, Arabian Night. Um, Bob Baffert's uh, Pacific Classic winner who... If, if, if you're a, a watcher of the show and a fan of Pastor Warrior, know that I loved in the Pacific Classic. Um, Arabian Night, um, as a two-year-old, ran at two and a quarter, um, comes back in his three-year-old debut, debut at Oakland Park. I think that was the Southwest Stakes. He ran, he ran in um, when he re really ran them off their heels in the slop, and he, he didn't go forward. He ran a three and a half. We like to see them go forward, but... He laid up, you know, he started late in his two-year-old year. It was November. He laid up um, after the uh, Southwest at, at Oakland in January, all the way to July, um, where he won, ran a one and three quarters at Monmouth. Um, didn't go forward off that race, interestingly enough. Um, ran a three in the Pacific Classic that he won and was able to win the Pacific Classic on a three, which is... Not really a great number for that race. So Arabian Night, uh, looking at his pattern, you know, he runs that one off the big layoff. He regresses and wins in the Pacific Classic. I would say that's one of the reasons that um, Bob Baffert elected to go in fresh. Um, that was probably a hard race for him. He regressed. He's freshened up. I think he goes past the one. Um 
how much past the one is going to determine whether or not he's the winner of the race. But I think he goes past that one and three quarters that he ran at Monmouth. Um, and if he goes, you know, a full point fast past, past it, which is conceivable to a zero or maybe, you know, a zero or one negative um, and gets into a negative number, then, you know, he's, he's, he's right in the race and he's definitely got um, a, a speedy type of, of running style where he can be on the pace or, or, or just off it, which, which might be a help depending on who shows up and who doesn't. Uh, brings us to Archangelo, who is probably going to be the favorite and is probably not only running to win the Breeders' Cup Classic, but to maybe win Horse of the Year if he wins it. Um, won to Belmont, won to Travers, uh, what was it, the Peter Pan, he won before that, and, he, he, you know, his pattern was interesting, and we talked about it on the other shows, um, I didn't think he was going to win the Belmont, I said he would regress, he did regress, he just regressed and won, but his pattern was at Gulfstream Park, he run a 10, he jumped to a 5, in the Peter Pan, he went all the way to a 1, 10, 5, 1, just screamed regression to me, there were those big leaps forward, um, but, it also showed that this is a racehorse and, you know, visually he just looks like a beast out West. He's another one going in fresh out there early. Um, Jenna Antonucci is out there with him already. As I see it, um, I've seen him on the racetrack. I've seen his last work. Um, looks like a million. Uh, so he goes 10, five, one, he regresses to a two and three quarters in the Belmont stakes, which I think was a much better, um, looked much better than it really was kind of race. Uh, I think they came home really slow. I think everybody was staggering. I, I think Forte's race looked better, look, looked better than it, than it actually was. Um, and I didn't like him off the Belmont to Travers layoff. He fooled me and won to Travers. And that was probably his most impressive race to, to date. And he run a zero and a half, um, very, very respectable number not quite good enough to win the classic. I don't think, um, I think you're going to have to get to a negative number to win the Breeders' Cup classic, but, um, he's certainly right there numbers wise. Now, pattern wise, does he have a pattern to go forward? 10, five, one, two and three quarter regress and win zero and a half goes forward, wins again, um, fresh again, um, you know, late August till early November. Um, he's got a pattern to me that suggests running very close to his best or, 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 or possibly going forward. Um, so I, I, I think number pattern wise, you know, he, he's definitely right in, in, in the race. Um, August Rodin, who we don't know whether or not is going to show up um, I've just got a feeling that he might, um, be a surprise late entry into the, into the race. I don't have the numbers on him, but if he is just based on what we've seen in Europe, he's a contender wherever he runs. Um, bright future, uh, bright future has got a really good pattern. Um, you, you know, it's funny handicapping, you know, and when you look at his past performances, he looks like he could be a cut below, some of these, but you know, maybe not. He's improving. He's just, you know, an improving four-year-old as opposed to an improving three-year-old, but never started at two, at three. Um, he started, he ran a four, then a six. Um, showed some some promise though. Comes back as a as a four-year-old, runs a two and a half at Gulfstream, a four at Churchill. Throws in a complete dud, 18 and a quarter at Belmont. Didn't fire at all, okay? We tossed that race. Um, Saratoga runs a zero and a quarter negative number. Fast race. Um, comes back, runs a zero. Um, so regressed a little bit off that zero and, and, and a quarter negative number. Um, but he paired two very, very fast races together at Saratoga. Does he just like Saratoga or can he take that, you know, take that, that, that fast race ability um, to another racetrack out West? Uh, he's going to have to prove that to me, um, but he's going well. He's steady. 
I don't necessarily see a big forward move, um, but I see a similar type number to his last, which puts him, you, you, you know, as a fringe, as, as, as a contender. I want to say fringe, um, but that's more off handicapping than his numbers. On his numbers, he's a contender. Um, defunded. Uh, another one from Bob. He's got a lot of races, so we'll just really focus on his five-year-old year because year, uh, that's what counts. Steady as a rock, except for one particular race. But it's gonna it's gonna come back to that angle that we've discussed in the past, where you know those steady, fast numbers, where they do it a couple of times in a row, usually signify um, or signal or tell. Um, an improving or monster race unless they do it too many times without doing that and then they kind of regress um, and that's exactly what happened with the funded um, we see one at Gulfstream I think I guess that was the Pegasus one 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 where was that monster race off all those ones didn't come regress to a four at Del Mar I think that was the Pacific Classic um, and then last time at Santa Anita bounces back to a one so he's steady as a rock unless he regresses so he was probably you know to me if bob runs him he's probably going to run his race his race is is, is 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 his top right now at this point in his career and his lifetime best is a one that's not good enough to win in my opinion i don't think a one is going to win the pacific classic there's faster horses than that so he's going to have to get to the negative numbers which with bob baffert Hey, always possible, always dangerous, tough to toss out, especially in his own home field. Um, but on the thoroughbred numbers and patterns, the funded is not quite fast enough to get the job done in my book. Derma Sodagake, the Japanese horse who we don't know whether or not is going to run. If he does, um, we know he's fast early. We also know he's not that fast late. Um, as a three-year-old, uh, which was last year, he ran a six and a half, a one and a half in Maidan at, at Dubai when he went, when, 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 when he run that race. And then in, in, in the Derby, he run a three and three quarters. Um, pace factor, maybe if he shows up influences the outcome of the race, maybe if he shows up, but he would have to run a lifetime best off that kind of layoff against Breeders' Cup classic horses numbers and patterns say good luck um forte is interesting we've always discussed him in detail um on our numbers and pattern shows and i've always had you know mixed feelings about him i don't think he's going to show up in the classic uh i just you know have that feeling he's a no show um if he is i think his pattern is not indicative of 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 a forward race or or going forward. It looks to me like he's going the wrong way. We've got as a three year old, two and a half, three and a half in those races at Gulfstream. Um, he was a vet scratch for the Derby. We all know that. Uh, he ran a one and three quarters at Belmont because he was wide. I think it's more because he was wide than he was running fast at the end. But even a one and three quarters, which is his best lifetime race is not good enough to win. He repeated that at Saratoga um, in the Jim Dandy. He run that one and three quarters in a race I think he should have been disqualified in. Uh, and then he run a four, um, well, I guess in the Travers. So, you know, it looks to me like he's going the wrong way. They're dealing with a quarter crack or some issue with him that we know of. Um, they could be dealing with things that we don't know of as well. Um, uh, just looks like he's going the wrong way. If he runs, I think he creates, a, you know, a good betting opportunity if you don't like him, because he'll take money off his reputation more so than um, what he may deserve according to how fast he is right now and how good he is right now. Um, go Rocket Ride, Richard Mandela, nobody, um, or at least as good as anybody, you know, he's right up there with the Bob Baffert's, Chad Brown's, and, you know, Aiden O'Brien, John Gosden's, and, you know, these other guys that are just, you know, masters at pointing for a particular race. And obviously, when they passed on the Derby and the Triple Crown races, you know, the Breeders' Cup Classic had to be had to be on their mind. I know they were kind of on the fence as to whether or not they'll run in the Pacific Classic. I believe that that's where they were going for. 
um, and that they were going to go for the classic. And that's exactly how it played out. But, you know, you look at him, he run a four and a quarter as a three-year-old, didn't run a two, four and a quarter again, um, lays off a couple of months, runs a five, needed that race, obviously, because he runs a zero and three quarter negative number when he wins the Haskell fast race, fast enough to win the classic regresses off that to a three and a half um, in the Pacific Classic, that Arabian night one. Um, got to say he bounces back and he's got that fa fast number, that zero and three quarter negative number. And it looks like he will go back to that or maybe even possibly go faster than that. And that makes him a, a strong contender on the third graph numbers and patterns. Um, King of Steel, I don't think, I thought he was going to show, he might not, um, I think he runs Saturday uh, for British Champions Day at, at Ascot, so, um, he's a pass. Um, Mage, Mage has got his work cut out for him, um, he's fast enough on his best day, I'm just not sure we're going to see his best day. A lot of respect for the connections, a lot of respect for Gustavo Delgado, um, a lot of respect for how they've managed this horse and made all the right calls. But if you make enough right calls, eventually you make a wrong one and going into classic might be the wrong one. I'm not sure. We've got, we know he's another three-year-old that didn't run a two, but we've got five, five, three and three, three and three quarters, run a zero in the derby not good enough to win, um, borderline good enough to win the classic. But I, like I said, I think you got to get to the negative. Um, three and a half at, at Pimlico in the Preakness, a zero in the Haskell that they said he needed that race, but he didn't go forward in the Travers. So he runs a, a six and a half, you know, his worst race ever, a dud, whatever you want to call it in the Travers, no known excuse, no visible excuse, um, nothing we can put our finger on, but... They're not backing off. They're coming into the classic um, and they've got something to prove. So to get to him, you got to think that there was a legit excuse in the, in, in, in the Travers or, you know, he regressed considerably off that Haskell race, but he's just not coming in with the right pattern. If it was less of a regression, I might be able to say, you know what? He's going to bounce back to that zero. But even if he does bounce back to that zero, he's got to pass it in order to win to me. So I don't love his pattern coming into the race. I love this pattern going into the Kentucky Derby. Um, don't love his pattern coming in, in, into the classic. Um, respect the connections, but the numbers and patterns say he's got his work cut out for him big time. Um, most had off. <coughs> Is a horse I hope shows up. Um, definitely has a pattern that says he's going to go forward. Um, you know, he's got a zero. He's got some twos. Uh, tough to rate. You know, the the the, the last two at, at 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 Ascot and York. But if he takes to the dirt um, and he shows up, it's John Gosden. He's got a pattern that suggests a forward move. He would have to move forward on the dirt in order to win this race. Um, but I could see it. Um, and like I said, you know, he's got a zero. Uh, and then, you know, in Dubai, on uh, he, you know, he run a two. Um, then he ran out Ascot and York races, which are kind of tough to gauge and, 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 and put numbers to here. But uh if he shows up, he's got a, a, a pattern to me that suggests he can move forward and, and be very dangerous. Um, Proxy, <laughs> he's run a, a, a race that's fast enough to win this two times in his career. Um, and he's coming in with a very good pattern. So if you like him, um, he's a horse that, you know, pattern and number wise, you got to say, yeah, he does have the numbers and the patterns to win. Um, handicapping, I don't know that I'm on his bandwagon, but, you know, as a five-year-old, as a two-year-old, he did run a zero and a quarter negative number at the fairgrounds. This year, he's run a three, um, zero and a quarter negative, fast enough to win, three negative 
absolutely fast enough race to win. Um, Ellis Park, three and a quarter. Mahmoud, zero. Saratoga, zero and a half. Um, those two zeros paired indicate a forward move. If he goes to that three negative, I mean, that that's fast enough to win this race, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, he's proxy. We know what he brings to the table. He's steady. He's honest. Um, and he's got a pattern that's, that says he's going to go forward. And if he does so go to that, you know, three negative, he's in the race. I mean... You know, handicapping is one thing and 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 thoroughbred numbers and patterns are another. And you've got to kind of be able to differentiate and mix and match and, you know, work them in, 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 in together. Saudi crown might go into classic, might go into mile. My gut tells me he's going to go into classic. Why not? Especially if Dermis Sotokake doesn't go, because um, that probably puts him clear on the lead. Um, another three-year-old that did not run it too. Um, like I said, the classic stands out this year for, you know, a couple of reasons, all these three-year-olds, a bunch of three-year-olds that didn't run it too. Um, everybody coming in fresh. He's one of the ones with a recent race. Uh, you know, if you count the Pennsylvania Derby at parks um, as, 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 as recent, it's, it's recent and compared to some of the others. Um, but as, as, as a three-year-old, we've got a two, four and a quarter, one and a half, three and a half, one and a half. Now, speed's always dangerous. Speed alone on the lead at Santa Anita, going a mile and a quarter is even more dangerous. Speed alone on the lead, going a mile and a quarter, trained by Brad Cox, is even more dangerous. With a Godolphin horse, even more dangerous. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Um, can he win the race? Uh, you, you know, his, his pattern doesn't scream to me, go forward. Um, and that's a concern. I see two, four and a quarter, one and a half, three and a half, one and a half. So I see that Z zigzag pattern that we've seen before. And with the recent race of the Pennsylvania Derby, looks to me like he's sitting on that Z going the other way, not going the way that we want to see him go. Um, so on thoroughgraph numbers and patterns, I say no. Um, but we got to look at how the pace shapes shapes up because we all know pace makes the race. There's a video on past the wire under the handicapping tab about pace and how pace makes the race and, you know, how you can use formulator and, 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 and use your pace projections in your own mind and what you see and what you know um, better than any, any pace projecting tool out there to know who's going to be on a lead. Um, and that video explains how to do it. It's definitely worth watching leading up to the Breeders' Cup. Pace makes the race on Pass the Wire TV. And it's under the, the uh, video section on PassTheWire.com. Definitely a video worth watching. Um, but on the pattern for me, Saudi Crown, I don't like it. Um, it's a Z-type Z, Z pattern heading the way that I don't want to see right now. Senior Buscador. He's run some fast races, um, fast enough to win, fringe, borderline. But as a five-year-old, we've got a two and three quarters, zero, two and three quarters. And then we've got something I like, zero, zero, zero. Um, the last one is a zero and three quarters, but we've got zero, zero, zero and three quarters. He's right on that verge where he's either going to go forward or going to regress. We don't know the answer to that yet. Um, three races is the, is the magic number. Cause if he runs a fourth zero, then I say a regression is definitely coming because he should have run that big race by now, but he's got a chance to show it in the classic. So if he gets the right pace set up and he trains well into the race and he looks really good going into the race, I would say as a bomb, take a look at him because he's got a pattern that's right on the fringe okay um he'll answer the question on 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 breeders cup classic day um i tend to think from a handicapping standpoint that he's a cup below but <laughs> strictly on the patterns it's put up or shut up time for senior buscador as to whether or not he can run fast enough to win the classic and if i'm right that you need a negative number to win the classic if you don't need a negative number and you could win the classic this year with a zero he's there 
I don't think that's the case, though. Why the Barrio? Interesting as all, all as anybody in, in, in the race. Third time Rick Dutro. First time in the Met Mile that he run this horse. Had a horrible trip. Um, still runs a zero and a half negative number. Comes back. Those of you that watched the show know I loved him in the Whitney. I think he was 10 to 1, a ridiculous Christmas gift of a price. Um, runs a six negative, by far faster than anybody in a race. He run a race. <clears throat> I'm not going to compare it to, to Flightline specific classic, which was just off the charts, but he ran by far the best race of any horse this year. Um uh, today that has run um, by far. And immediately after the Breeders' Cup Classic, Rick Dutro packed his suitcase, head out west, got to Santa Anita early with this horse. Um, didn't even consider a prep off the Whitney. Um, he was the one that kind of set the tone this year for coming in fresh. A lot of people kind of followed, followed his lead because the Whitney was before any of those other races. After the Whitney, he said, I'm going right to the Classic. Packed up his game, head out west, and he's been there since with White Barrio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, bottom line is this. He's had enough time to recover from that. Um, is he going to regress? He can regress and win. He can regress two, three, four points and still win the race off that. If he runs anything back close to that, the race is for second. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, if he gets the right pace set up and everything else, and 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 runs back anything close to that, the the the, the race the race is for second. Um, and he's got fast numbers. You know, before he ran a two negative when Safi Joseph had him. He run threes and twos and ones when Safi on a one when Safi Joseph had him. So he's always been fast. He's always had ability, and he seems to have blossomed with, with with the barn change and it's just a a brand new animal so uh he's got a pattern where you know i i can't say a horse looks like he's going to go forward off a six negative but he looks like he's going to run another monster race off that layoff and third time rick dutro um so i would say on the pattern and, and and numbers absolute contender and again um not to be redundant, but if he runs anything close to his race in the Whitney and can get the extra eighth of a mile, the race is for second, um, regardless of who else shows up. <laughs> Zandon. Zandon's interesting. Always showed a lot of ability. Um, never really delivered on it last time. Steady as a rock. Has a phenomenal pattern. Um, nobody... I mean, Chad's in that in that conversation as nobody better than him. You know, he's and and there's a lot of guys that is nobody better than you know. Well, not a lot, but a few. Like we said, Bob, Chad, Aiden, Gosden, a couple of others, Dutro, uh, who's won the Breeders' Cup Classic. You know, and there's others, Brad Cox. Now, I mean, these guys are just you know phenomenal at getting their horses to peak, Pletcher at the, at, the, at the right time, and 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 there's others. I don't want to slight anybody, but. Chad's definitely on, quote, the list um, and up there on the list. Um, and every time this year, this horse brings it. One and a half negative, one and a half negative, one and a half negative, one and a quarter negative. Now, comes to that point where do those steady, fast races signify that jump forward. Well, he's over the three limit that I like to call that that three limit. You know, he's done it four times in a row. So I think we're either going to see the same thing, which is fast enough to put him in the mix. Um, or maybe we finally see that regression after 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 those, you know, four big efforts. The flip side of that coin, and there's always a flip side, is maybe last time, you know, he was the best horse in that race and he looked like he was beaten. And then, you know, Pratt got him to the outside and he come flying past everybody and he was just better than those horses and run his number and run his race and got the job done. Maybe he's that, um, 
lack of a better term, light bulb went off kind of horse. And, you know, he finally figured out, hey, I, I, I could win one of these races with the right pace set up. You know, you may wind up, I don't know where Pratt's going to go, but you may wind up with Flavion Pratt and Chad Brown um, at 25 to 1 in the Breeders' Cup Classic with a horse that on the thoroughbred numbers and patterns looks like, you know, he can he can definitely have a shot to win the race. So we'll be back in a minute, wrap this show up. Um, hope it's helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment. It helps a lot. I appreciate it. We all at Pass the Wire appreciate it. Um, check out the seminar um, brought to you by, like I said, Sure Bet Coffee, best around. Um, Am Wager, <laughs> Day to Dream Stable. And Game of Silks, who you already know about by now. If you're not playing Game of Silks, you just not you just really really missing out. So, um, thanks to all of those and all of our, our, our other sponsors. But um, check out the seminar. We'll wrap this up in a minute with some final thoughts, and uh, and we got a lot more a lot more to follow. <laughs> the 2023 Breeders' Cup World Championships. Exclusive interviews, barn tours, winning insights, and more. Join Pass the Wire all week long on the backside and at the rail from Santa Anita. Pass the Wire at the Breeders' Cup World Championships is presented by Am Wager and Dare to Dream Stable. You know, it's important to remember we've got to we've got to handicap the race. We've got to see who actually shows up. We've got to see how the track is playing. We've got to see what the pace looks like, and that's that that's that's always vital. But this year in the classic, it's more vital than ever um, because there are some fast early horses in there that can get in the tussle, and there's some very quality closers um, that are not really going to come back to deep closers. And Santa Anita, um, I think I, I did a show the other day with uh, Ed DeRosa and Keeneland Dan. And Keeneland Dan pointed out a, a, a stat about, you know, the classic at Santa Anita. You kind of got to be one, two, three, four uh, early and, and definitely turn it for home to have any kind of shot. And, you know, plenty of horses have gone wire to wire to win the Breeders' Cup Classic out there. But the track's a little different now. They don't soup them up like they used to. So personally, I don't think that stat is as important as it may appear or as it may have been in the past. Um, you know, we play the cards that were dealt. We play the hand that were dealt. And we play the game today, um, not three, four, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, and things do change. Um, they stay the same, but they change. And they, I don't think because of all the safety concerns and all the other issues and, and, and the Breeders' Cup operates under an abundance of caution. So I don't think the track is going to be as souped up as it may have been in the past for a lot of other Breeders' Cups. And that may level the playing field for some of the closers. So that stat may be a little overrated and, 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 and overplayed. But, you know, on the patterns, you know, working backwards, Zandon, excellent pattern, wide a barrio said what I had to say about him, excellent pattern. You know, if he if he does anything close to repeat, um, races for second. Uh, senior Buscador, right on the threshold of, you know, put up or shut up. Uh, 
Saudi crown. I didn't like the zigzag uh, way that it shaped up because he looks like he's zagging when he should be zigging, in my opinion. Uh, Proxy, surprisingly, has the numbers to win, has the pattern to win. Um, handicapping is, an, is, a, is another story. Uh, you know, Mostadaf, hope he shows up. He, he would be awfully scary if he did. Um, Mage, a lot to prove, don't like the pattern, has to run a career best off a of clunker. Um, and even if he goes forward, has to go really, really forward. Uh, King of Steel, we don't think is going to show. Go Rocket Ride, definitely looks like a horse that has a pattern that suggests a big forward move in the, in the, in the classic and a big forward move would put a minute forte. We didn't like his pattern. Um, Derma Sabakake, we didn't think, um, we didn't like his pattern The funded. Uh, we didn't like his pattern, uh, bright future. We liked his pattern. We had handicapping questions, but we certainly liked his pattern. Uh, August wrote in, like I said, a threat anywhere he shows up. Uh, not sure he's coming. Archangelo, you know, we discussed, uh, you know, pattern wise, looks like he's going to run same kind of number that he ran. Um, maybe even go forward and, and then that, 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 you know, patterns and numbers alone would put him in there. Um, Arabian night, as much as I respect, you know, Bob, um, does look like he's sitting on a forward move, but it's going to have to be a big forward move in order for him to win win the classic. I'm, I, you know, we're talking four point minimum forward move, which is certainly possible for a three year old at this late time of the year. Um, so he's got a pattern that you know suggests he can he can get it done if uh, if he runs a peak and and you know Bob's on that 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 short list too of guys that can get them to peak. Um, and, and very high on the list of, of, of guys that can get him to peak or girls that can get him to peak um, when it counts. So there you have uh, my take on the Breeders' Cup Classic by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns. I hope you again enjoyed the show. You know, hit the like button, throw, throw some love our way. We appreciate it. People notice it. We notice it. And uh, it means a lot for us and the channel. Um, if you've got anything else that you want to see before the Breeders' Cup, um, I can't promise it. I promise the Breeders' Cup Classic. We got it done. Um, I can't promise that, um, but we'll try. But, you know, Breeders' Cup Week, we're going to have a lot of exclusive stuff that you just will not hear or see anywhere else but here uh, on Pass to Wire TV. So um, check us out. Subscribe. Uh, and you know, special requests, put them in the comments, let us know what you think and what you want to see. And uh, grazie everybody for tuning in. Ciao for now. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Frankie Vittori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's a good start. <laughs> so you, have, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV.
Breeders' Cup Classic. Vino Rosso has taken the lead. And it's a vintage performance by Vino Rosso. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING. Get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Hello, friends. Cheeto DiPaggio here, Mob King. Anytime I'm wanting to know any information about the sport of kings, horse racing, I look to my man Jonathan Stetton at PassTheWire.com. And if you're looking to bet, like I always am, no better source than Jonathan. They don't call him the pick six king for nothing. So why don't you do what I do with anything that pertains to horse racing? PassTheWire.com. Tell him Cheeto DiPaggio sent you. It is here, the big day, the day almost all of us in horse racing wait for, Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're gonna see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row, and a Breeders' Cup champion. We've got modern games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses we said on Pass the Wire TV all week long on the backside. Those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern Games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern Games storming down the center of the court. Modern Games, a two-time Raiders Cup winner. You bet he is. That is Rebels Romance, who in my humble opinion is one of Godolphin's uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance, rolling on the outside, oh my God, it makes her bend down toward the inside. Rebels Romance down the center of the course, has to post to home. Rebels Romance wins the turf over Stoney. We got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. And it's Flightline, and it's mind tingling, jaw dropping, awe inspiring, secretarian like. Now, probably to me, the most intriguing horse in the race. Uh, Arabian Knight, who I thought was probably um, one of the best three-year-olds early in the year. Feel for the one million dollar fan duel Pacific Classic sent on their way. On the inside, Go Rocket Ride broke beautifully and goes straight to the lead. Being joined now by Arabian Knight. Two favorites, one, two in the early going. Arabian Knight is the, 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 the last and maybe, maybe, maybe mirror, mirror on the wall who's the fastest one of all. At the end of the day, it just might be Arabian Knight if he goes forward as much as I think he can off that one and three quarters. It's Arabian Knight hanging on. Go Rocket Rider, Arabian Knight has won the Pacific Classic. I land on the bottom horse, Bright Future for Todd Fletcher. As the field turns for home, Bright Future, is up to take the lead. One for one at Saratoga. You you all know how much I like that. And we all know that all meet long, the horses that went over the track, the horses that like the track. Bright Future digging in. Proxy's trying to get him. Bright Future or Proxy. Bright Future, Proxy, here's the line. Photo finish, Bright Future. Very interesting in Detroit, in my opinion. This is a horse that always showed a lot of potential. Uh, exploded second time out, win by four. Here comes Cogburn, and Cogburn has his sights on Nobles in the final 16th of a mile. There's a lot of turf in this pedigree, top and bottom. 
It will be Cogburn on the outside getting to the front. The other thing that I like about, about Cogburn a lot is when I look at his star graph numbers, uh, he's got some fast races. He's got a one. And Cogburn under Ricardo Santana Jr. wins the Troy. I love in these three-year-old races, again, those of you that, that, that watch the show and have been reading, you know, you know, my columns and a lot of my handicapping things all over the years know I like up and comers. I like betting horses to do things that, you, you know, maybe we can anticipate that some others can't. And that's how you sometimes beat um, a lot of favorites. I like program trading. And program trading, program trading, resilient coming back on the inside. Program trading would not be denied. Quite a barrier was very interesting to me for a couple of reasons. We heard from Blake, we know what the bond thinks, okay? Second time Rick Duttrell. This time gets the jump from the catbird seat and turn it for home. Wider Barrio was going to be in the race, if not on the lead, in the race, and the one they got to go get. Really they're at the top of the stretch in the Whitney, and White of Barrio is the leader narrowly over Giant Game. We've had Irad breezing him a bunch at Belmont before he came up here. I know Irad really likes him. You know, we think that he should improve off of his last race. And, you know, if he gets a clean trip, we're expecting him to run big. Look at White of Barrio and Irad Ortiz. In a runaway, White of Barrio wins by almost six lengths. Does it better?